Hello and good morning. It's Phil Thatch and I'm here at the first overlook on Chilhowee Mountain. It's sunrise and I'm taking a picture of Parksville Lake down below. I've got uh, two or three places I also want to stop this morning so I'm going to try to get this one knocked out pretty quickly. I'm using the Z6 and the FTZ and the 24 to 70 and the sun is rising. Here's my composition. You can see the sun rising uh, and hitting the mountains in the background and on the right. And there at the bottom in the foreground is, is the uh, marina there on Parksville Lake. And over, let's see if I can point it out, right about there is Okoy Dam number one. And just beautiful mountain scenery here. Okay, so that last clip was video straight out of the Z6. And then here's the photograph from the Z6 with the exact same composition. And I hope you like it. This is kind of the standard shot that you'll see made from that mountain looking down at Parksville Lake. I switched from my 24 to 70 to my 70 to 200 and I've made two or three shots uh, of this area with the longer lens. And I'm not sure if I've ever seen anybody make a long lens shot up here. I'm sure I have uh, actually now that I think about it, but I just don't recall it. But uh, every time I've come up here, I've shot with my 14 to 24. So this is a this is a whole new way of looking at it for me. Here's another one of the compositions that I worked on from this location, looking down at Parksville Lake. Okay, so that was more Z6 footage, and here is the shot. I was mentioning that I took a lot of pictures with my 70 to 200. Well, this was the only one that I liked enough to share, but I did like it a pretty good bit. Okay, so I am packing up now and seeing about trying to find some more compositions up here on this mountain before I lose the good light. I've stopped now at the third overlook on Chilhowee Mountain. I've never actually been all the way this far before and I'm kicking myself because look at this vista. This thing is just begging for a panorama, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm setting up on this wall because I need all the height I can get because there's some brushy foliage in the foreground. And I'm going to manually focus. This wall's narrow. I've had to not fully extend my tripod legs, which I'm not a fan of. I'm using a two second timer. I think that's still on. Nope, let's turn that back on. I've set my white balance manual so it doesn't change between any of these shots. Take a picture of my hand at the end. I may do another pano kind of looking off to the right. Of course, the first thing I did was get my tripod perfectly level. So once my tripod's level and the camera's level, you can turn the camera on the tripod and you'll still be level after you turn. That is a key panorama tip. I'm shooting at f16 to try to have maximum depth of field. I actually made three panoramas from this location. One was to the left of this and then I made this one twice. I ended up not liking the one to the left of this. And I made this one twice because the first time I missed my focus. But this one that I did like, I really like quite a bit. Here it is, not stretching across your screen. And there are the settings, 110 millimeters F16 and 1 15th of a second. And this was nine images combined to make the pano. Okay, onward and forward. Time to go look for some more stuff on this mountain. 
I'm walking along the trail now to Benton Falls. Never been here before. And even though we had a little bit of rain yesterday morning, there's probably not gonna be hardly any water flow here. So I'm gonna call this uh, what a respected uh, Australian YouTube photographer named Adrian Alfred, he calls this a, a recce. So I'm going here now to kind of get the lay of the land and see what lenses will work. I've carried the entire Holy Trinity and I'm sure that one of those three probably won't work for it. So next time I come, I can only carry one carry bag, camera bag, and leave one of those three lenses behind and carry my vlogging camera that I'm using right now in the place of one of those lenses. So, cheers Adrian, I'm doing a recce. I think this must be the top of Benton Falls. There's definitely water flowing here, not a lot. Long way down and those rocks look slick so I'm not gonna get any closer to the edge than this. Well, I have made it, I've arrived here at Benton Falls. Uh, not flowing very much, but it's really beautiful. And there's a section you can probably see in the video uh, right here at the bottom that's really beautiful. And even though there's not high flow today at all, that's what I'm gonna concentrate on making a photo of. At least that's what I think. So let me get set up and we'll talk about it some more. I put the 70 to 200 on and the circular polarizer and I made a few vertical shots from kind of on the right hand side. I was gonna shoot from right here, but that boulder on the left kind of got in the foreground and messed up the shot. And it was a little better from over there. And now I'm gonna look for some more compositions. I've moved closer and made a few uh, vertical shots, stepping down to the 24 to 70 at just under 50 millimeters. But I think really the best shot of that little small section of the falls that appears to have good flow is right up next to it. So, so much for my recce to uh, try to leave one of these three lenses behind next time because it looks like I'm gonna end up using all three and I'll probably be switching to the 14 to 24 for the up close shot. Over there. On second thought, my recce may have been successful because I didn't like any of the 70 to 200 shots, only the 24 to 70 and the 14 to 24 shots that I like. And this shot is at 24 millimeters, pretty close to the falls. I made a few more shots really close and I was able to keep the 24 to 70 on for some vertical shots, but I think I'm still gonna try the 14 to 24. Okay, so this is the last shot with the 24 to 70. This is another 24 millimeter shot. And this makes the foreground look small and the waterfall look kind of big. Now here comes the first shot with the 14 to 24. This is at 14 millimeters, and this makes the foreground look huge, and the waterfall section that's flowing good look really small. So maybe somewhere in the middle of that, maybe I should have shot a 20 millimeter shot of that same area. I absolutely love this 14 millimeter lens. It gets you into places you just can't go with other focal lengths. I made a few shots from right over here a minute ago. And I'm not sure if my camera bag was in them or not. So let me take a look. Nope, no camera bag in that shot, but definitely worth checking before I moved back. There's a lot of, uh, um, reflection on these rocks that I would like to take out if I had a polarizer, but it actually reviewing it on the back of the camera, it actually kind of looks good. And uh, the green foliage over in the top right corner of the screen, I wish it was turning color, but I'm a little early for that. So I'm a little early for that I'm a, and I'm a little early for big flow from this waterfall. I'm noticing now that at the very top of the waterfall, there's some direct sun right on the very top. So I may put the, uh, I may switch lenses again and try to shoot the top with that sun on it. 
Okay, so this 14 millimeter shot, this is the first shot of this, my favorite composition of the day. And I did crop this four by five. I cropped only off of the left hand side of the shot and I like the way it turned out. Starting to get some sparkly sun down here too. Yeah, definitely. I think I'm gonna keep working on this shot instead. Because this shot's probably my favorite shot of the waterfall shot so far. If I can get a little, a little bit of scattered, the sun's right over there and kind of sprinkling its way through the trees. I'm gonna redo my focus and make sure that I'm still good and in focus. That ought to do it. Because I really like this composition. Two second timer is what I've been using all day. What a beautiful place. I'm thinking I may crop this to four by five or maybe even square. I have the camera completely level side to side and forward and back. So they're, other than just the overall wideness of it, there shouldn't be any distortion like this or like this, which is my least favorite thing about this ultra wide lens. Is it any lens when it's not dead level forward to back will have some, uh, you know, if you're tilting up, there will be some distortion like this but the wider the lens is, the more it will show. And this lens is ultra wide. I worked this location and this composition for a long time. And the first photo that I showed you was my favorite photo with not much light on the falls. And this one's my favorite one with scattered light going across it. Uh, it never got full sun on it, just the scattered light. And like I say, that one is the best with the scattered light. Well, I made a few uh, 70 to 200 shots of some of the brighter parts of the waterfall that I wasn't very thrilled with. And uh, you know, the light's kind of getting worse and worse. So I think that's going to do it for me here at Benton Falls. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And look at that. Just as soon as I get done, people start arriving. Perfect timing. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>